Awful video games have been a major player in the industry since the beginning of time. Whether or not it was intentional, these things have been coming out week after week, surprising millions with their badness. Sometimes it's due to a series of unfortunate design choices like Too Human. Other times it's because something's made with a quick turnaround time purely for a quick buck, like a licensed game. If you go into any gaming store, you're bound to find more garbo and shovelware than good games these days, and well, that's just how it is. But my favorite example of something bad is something a little different. The budget title. The game developed with minimal cash, released at minimal pricing, usually to minimal reviews. Your family party 30 games in ones, your Jeep thrills. Yes, this is real. But the main topic of today comes from a little Japanese publisher called D3 Publisher, the Simple Series. Games with a very simple naming convention. You ever wanted to play the Mahjong? Oh! What about the bowling, or the snowboard, or my personal favorite, the power shovel? Not even kidding, this is sick. One day the price of the controller will drop. One day. But the Simple Series game we're looking at today not only bust its way out of the simple name, but also into the hearts of like five people, straight from the developer of Sinran Kagura and Battle Arena Toshinden, Simple 2000 Series Volume 61, The One Chan Bara. And also Simple 2000 Series Volume 101, The One Chan Pond, The One Chan Bara 2 Special Chapter. That's like 30 syllables. So sit down, grab your katana and cowboy hats, remain moderately dressed, and get ready to kill countless zombies because today we're doing a complete Onichan Bara retrospective. So yo, it's Austin, and no, I'm not being forced to do this video. In fact, I kind of want to do this video because there's a little bit of a weirdo in me that really wants an Onichan Bara retrospective to exist. One of those moments in life where you kind of look yourself in the mirror and you're like, wow, I wish I had some skills. And for us, I recommend today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people like you and I have come together to learn and teach things. It's a great place to learn some new skills, dive further into your passions, and get lost in your creativity. Today I want to recommend Roxanne Gay's creative writing, crafting personal essays with impact. As someone who spends a ton of time writing videos filled with research and my own personal feelings, I think that this is right up anyone's alley looking to get out there and start putting your thoughts onto a piece of paper or typing it, however your, whatever your finger do. But let's say you like something like, oh, anime, yeah, and manga, and you wanna to try to learn how to draw in that style. Well, there's a lot of drawing guides and more advanced classes you have access to on Skillshare covering exactly that. You name a topic, it's probably on Skillshare. There's something for everybody. Skillshare is curated for learning, meaning that with a subscription, you'll have unlimited access to the entire catalog of courses, meaning that you can pick from and learn things at your own pace. So today, for the first 1,000 people to click the link down in the description, you're gonna get yourself a free trial to Skillshare Premium. And that's unlimited access to exploring the website and your creativity. Check it out today. A huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this channel again, but for now, One Chan Bara. Or as some of you might know it, Zombie Zone. We need to talk about Kusoge. Kusoge is a Japanese slang that roughly means, well, shitty game. However, it's become something used as a term of endearment or nostalgia. It's the realization that a game may be pretty bad, but still finding a way to enjoy it. The most prime example of this for Westerners to me has to be Bad Rats. I'm sure a lot of you have either gifted or have been gifted a copy of Bad Rats on Steam. An awful game with awful physics and a terrible concept, but also one you can't seem to look away from. Like really, this is a bit but hey, that's Kasoge. Now, D3 Publisher and the Simple Series. This is just like Kasoge Central. You may think you've never played a Simple Series game before, but I bet you have. Whenever they'd come to the States back in the day, it wasn't via D3, but by another publisher like Acclaim or Age Tech, and they would always change the name of them. All of these games were made by a plethora of developers like Irim, Success, Tamsoft, Taito, and they'd come out very inconspicuously. Fellow internet old men may remember Age Tech's A1 game Games, a series with very descriptive names like racing, boxing, bowling, battle hunter. Or what about the other hidden ones like RC Helicopter, All-Star Slammin' D-Ball, or of course, Power Shovel. You know when you hit that main menu though, that it's a simple game. So that brings us to the PlayStation 2. Clearly sick of developing games like Hello Kitty Bowling, V-Bowling, and a uh, V-Bowling Hyper, Tamsoft decided that it was time to fully take advantage of the PlayStation 2 and push their games to the limit. And by that, I mean the Booba, the Honkery Doos. Simple 2000 Series Volume 51, the Daibijin. Also 
also known in Europe as Demolition Girl, known to us watching this video as the Macrophilia game, where, well, it's, it's like a more gamer version of Mr. Mosquito. This was, of course, the beginning of the end, and Tamsoft began shifting their simple series focus to smut. I can imagine that Hot Girls in Bikinis fighting probably sells a couple more copies than the Block Kazushio hype whatever this is. A mere few months later in 2004 would come the One-Chan Bara, and the developer Tamsoft was never the same, and neither were Europeans. Americans, we were good though. We didn't get any of these games till the 360. Not sure if that's lucky or not. One Jambara is actually a very simple concept. Go figure. The name is a portmanteau of two words basically coming together as Big Sister Sword Fighter or Samurai. How that becomes this is a bit beyond me, but I can't say I hate it. This is Aya, just Aya, no surname here, and she's on a mission to, well, actually I'm not really sure of any character motivations or interests or likes, dislikes, but I do know that she's surviving in a zombie apocalypse. When this was brought to Europe as a zombie zone, the story is told in extremely slow scrolling text describing that Aya wants to kill her sister for killing her father, and that's it, yay, revenge. It's when you play it for more than four seconds that you realize, oh, oh god, it's awful. It's amazing. Zombie Zone here is dark and hard to see. It runs poorly. The screen goes extremely blurry anytime you're doing your main combo. It only has three levels, each one you play twice, sometimes twice in a row. What is this, Dragon Age 2? It's got endless waves of enemies to fight and not a single cutscene in sight. I hope you like listening to one song for 80% of your time playing, one with Commander Shepard dancing energy. Look, there's not much nice I can say about the original One Chambara. Frankly, it's a huge mess with awful level design, including one that shifts into Silent Hill territory with fixed camera angles that shift the direction your character is moving. Certain levels have puzzle mechanics that require you to collect keys to use on doors, but there's no map, there's no indication that a key is in a room, and it won't even appear until every enemy is dead. You'll walk into a room and be assaulted with 30 zombos that'll start chain comboing you as you sit there and watch your health shrink down, and that's not even going into the berserk mechanic. It's not very obvious from anything happening or any of the text that you read, but Aya is... <gasps> Aya is a member of something called the Baneful Bloodline. She's not just any undead hunter, she's basically the Simon Belmont of this world. But this bloodline is cursed and resembles something close to vampires. As you slice through endless waves of zombies, you'll get covered in their blood, which is totally 70s grindhouse in concept and I'm all there for it. But once this little meter fills up, Aya explodes into a berserk status that makes her way more powerful while slowly draining her health. And uh, that draining doesn't stop, in fact it will kill you. You can make it stop with an item that drops or off of one of those goddess statues for some reason. But the game's found a way to punish you for playing it well, and that's not the only way it does that. As you slice dudes up with your swords, they become more and more covered in blood until they get stuck into enemies, meaning you'll have to do an active reload to clean your blades before going back in. That's actually kind of dope in concept, but in the game it just feels bad. That and when you're in your berserk form, the entire screen starts going insane. Ah yes, a normal and very visible screen. And well, there's not really much to say about the original One Chan Bara. This is pretty much everything. I guess there's a few bosses you can fight, and if you barely tilt the stick forward, you get to see 99% of the budget, which was animating this. Jesus Christ. Next up, the Simple 2000 series, Volume 80, the Oni Champuru, the Oni Chan Special Chapter. This is actually the same game. Literally the same game with a few extra characters, specifically guest starring big woman Riho Futaba from Demolition Girl as a regularly sized woman. Weirdly though, this also got a release in Europe as Zombie Hunters via Essential Games, which was D3's short-lived European branch. Zombie Zone was done by 505 Games, who are still around to this day. So they decided to just republish, restart the name, and do it all on their own. The weirdness comes into play when we reach Simple 2000 Series Volume 9, the One Chambara 2, or more specifically, its upgraded version, the One Champon. Champuru and Champon are both regional types of Japanese stir fry, by the way, a dish that entails putting together a bunch of ingredients into one pan and letting it sizzle, which is probably why these versions of the game have guest characters. The Oni Champon was released in Europe as Zombie Hunters 2 when it has the same exact logo, the same exact picture of Aya, it just has Gun Girl in the back now. These simple games, I swear. What if I told you it's better? 
Well, I wouldn't be lying. At the end of the previous game, you defeat your evil sister Saki, but end up being the perfect One-Chan and taking her in as a fellow zombie hunter. After all, attempted murder was just a misunderstanding. This time around, you get a choice of multiple characters, Aya, Saki, and the mysterious Reiko. Not that you'd be able to read their names, considering this amazing font it's spelled out in. Seriously, this is supposed to say Riho. There's a bit more going on this time, but every bit of story is told through Star Wars epilogue text. All you really need to know is girls, zombies, Zombies, Reiko may or may not be evil, and this time there's an in-game map. Now you can track objectives and make sure you aren't spending 100 years looking around aimlessly. Although you'll probably still do that because map to map directions are not clear. In accordance with the whole simple series philosophy, One Jambara 2 is essentially more of the exact same concept the first game threw out. It's a sleazy Xoge that's something you pull out with friends to laugh at. Although it starts to have more interesting systems here. Combat has something called cool combos, which are time button presses with your combo in order to do more damage. There's canceling mechanics, directional based combos, and the newly added two character swap mechanics. The first game feels stiff and uninteresting, but things are starting to get better here. I mean, it's extremely clunky, jank, and occasionally glitchy as hell, but it's getting there. If the first game is a 3 out of 10, this would be a 4 and a half or something. It's technically a better feeling video game despite still looking dark, grimy, and like a headache when you slip into berserk mode, but you still only have the bare minimum of levels here. You got a mall, a graveyard, a city, and a cave. All look basically the same, and it's still impossible to see anything. The origins of this series lean really heavily on campy horror exploitation films and appealing to that fan exclusively. It's like a more fan service filled version of Lollipop Chainsaw without any of that game's budget. You can see bits of potential in a lot of this game to be a fun cult thing, but it really fails to hit that mark. Oh, how things will change. Oni Chambara 1 and 2, or Zombie Zone and Zombie Hunters 1 and 2, forgettable and not really worth anyone's time. So, moving forward 15 years, the first two games would actually get a complete remake called One Chanbara Origin, which to this day is still the most recent title. But since the series' ever memorable, ever evolving narrative that we definitely talked about continues from here, I figured we'd make a quick pit stop to talk about it. But no video or retrospective on this topic would be complete without world renowned One Chanbara historian Matt McMuscles. So, I'm gonna let him take over for a minute. Matt, what do you gotta say for yourself? Titties! True, so true. So, Matt, why don't you go ahead and tell us what happened with One Chambara Origin? And yes, I bought a physical copy. You think I'm a coward? It's not every day that a game gets itself a remake, let alone something by D3, but here we are. Over time, Simple as a brand would disappear and One Chambara would become its own thing, still published by D3, but treated less and less like a budget game. Surprise, surprise, the quality also goes up, and I'm sure Mr. Boko no Eruption will go into that, but for now, let's saddle up and talk about One Chambara Origin. Also known as, we got ourselves an actual art style now. Ditching the realistic, uh, well, uh, realistic in quotations art style of the first two games, Tamsoft brought on artist Katsumi Inami, known for designing characters in the popular anime Bakano, and for some of the Legend of Heroes games. The ending result, anime. Somehow Aya looks less scandalous? Maybe it's the belts, maybe it's the fact that they finally decided to give her facial expressions. Since this is a retelling of the first two games, it's nice to actually see cutscenes that follow the events instead of the Star Wars pre-crawl thing telling us about some insurrection happening off screen. Even if it does the Sonic Adventure 2 thing where characters talk over each other, including the same character. She became more precious to him than either you or or your mother. He no longer needed the two horrid father. <laughs> I'm sure you don't remember me at all. Thankfully, the games got a lot better. If you played Zombie Zone or Hunters, I'm sure you had little hope for the big sister bikini samurai girl to achieve something called quality. But hey, they somehow pulled it off and made a pretty fun game that won Famitsu's Gold Award. The story's more coherent, the gameplay way smoother than its source material, and Austin totally didn't write this section. Hey, you like Origin? We played it on your channel a long time ago. You can watch that after this video, remember? See, look, that right there? 
That's some synergy. That was like eight months ago though. Synergy. The redesigns really help things out as a lot of the side characters and villains stand out in a way that they didn't before. Those girl sibling zombies in the first game, hey look, they're actual characters with dialogue now and ones you kind of even feel bad for. Okay, maybe, maybe not that bad. The most impressive part of Origin reimagining the franchise though is how much more likable it is compared to its origins. It feels like 20% less smutty, 50% more anime, and just a smidge cooler. Especially when you go into the berserk mode, now called ecstasy. It looks so much cooler now and not like Ganguro Girl. Don't, don't Google that. Nah, you go Google that. Look, it's still a bit trashy, but that's why we're here. It no longer kills you and instead is just a form shift like your devil triggers or any other number of gauge-based cool mode stances. You know, like a modern video game or something. Cool timing of attacks still exists and you can even have a meter on screen to practice or just use, I guess. AKA coward mode. As you'll see later, modern One Chambara is a lot faster and more aligned with other character action games. And while Origin still smacks of a budget title, it's a huge improvement, even if it's still incredibly glitchy. It also helps that there's more than three maps. Congrats, y'all did it. Plus now you can actually see Aya and Saki's alleged father, Obero. Reiko is also now Lei and way cooler and has a much more involved part in the story. It does go more into Reiko as a character and presents both of the first two games as a cohesive narrative as opposed to whatever the heck they were doing before. The cartoony style works a lot more in Oni Chambara's favor since you can have the characters doing more ridiculous stuff without it going into the uncanny valley. At the end of the day though, Oni Chambara Origin is still dumb as all hell, but this is a lot closer to something that could be a fun cult game as opposed to like a Kasoge, you know, as an example, Simple 2000 Volume 61, Ass Prisoners 101% Climax. And as you'll see, the big sister sword fighter is going to be going through a lot of changes over the next several video games. But if you want to try the series out, One Chumbara Origin kind of falls somewhere between Lollipop Chainsaw and Bayonetta and is a decent game in spite of all the honkers. Or for some, enhanced by. You silly degenerates. <laughs> I think you mean we silly degenerates. Shout out to Matt McMuscles. Go check out his channel and the gameplay video we did together on Origin after this. Yeah. But now you're going to have to play some more crappy games. Good luck, fucker. Ah, uh, true. All right. Well, that's it for me. I'm out. Uh, this is the most I've talked about Oni Chambara uh, ever. But yeah, no, Austin, if you want to play more of the games with me, please just let me know. Just, just text me, call me, please. And you're the only person I know that likes them. Well, that was one of the best games in the series. And now we have to talk about some of the worst and the first ones to hit the States, like it's bikini the Bikini. Bikini Zombie Squad for the 360 and Bikini Zombie Slayers for the Wii. Now these games actually came out on the same day and it was very close to my birthday as well, which I just found out was the same birthday as Aya's. So this video might just be a curse to destiny of mine. And you know what? I didn't buy either of these despite working at a retail gaming store because I bought Retro Game Challenge instead. Same day. What a blurst day. Despite coming out two years apart in Japan, the United States got both of its first two One Champara games on the same day, February 10th, 2009. Truly a weird day. At this point, D3 was now self-publishing in the States, giving us games like Earth Defense Force stateside. They also published White Knight Chronicles 2 and Blue Dragon Awakened Shadow for some reason, but that's besides the point. I guess that they thought that One Chambara was going to be a huge hit, because they decided to hit a majority of the gaming market on one day, between the Wii and the 360. That was like everything back then. I guess it kind of makes sense after all, zombies were hot at this time. Left 4 Dead was extremely popular, and its sequel was on the horizon. The Walking Dead was making waves in the comic industry, and I mean, you guys know about zombies, there's always something zombie happening. So let's take a look at the Xbox 360 game, Bikini Samurai Squad, or as it's known in Japan, One Chambara Vortex, The Descendants of the Cursed Blood. Guess what? Now we got cutscenes. Can you guess what's in it? 
That's right, screen tearing. I love how the characters never put any attention on it. No one cares that Aya's wearing nothing. These two sisters are just ready to go out there and kick some zombie butt. Or as this interview said back in the day, um, it's happening at the worst of times. She's taking a shower and she just throws some clothes on, runs out and starts chopping them up. By the way, when I say cutscenes, I mean the entire game has almost eight minutes of cutscenes. It's certainly no Metal Gear Solid 4, that's for sure. You still got your text crawls, big, thick text crawls talking about zombies. It's weird that the name of this game is Bikini Samurai Squad, considering I has the only character in the game repping a bikini. Both Saki and the new character Anna, spelled A-N-N-N-A -N -N -A for some reason, are not. Hell, she's not even a samurai, she has guns. And well, it's basically the exact same game again, from starting in a graveyard, going into a city, finding keys to open doors. It's like I'm playing a slightly better looking version of the old game with even worse frame rate. Except this time, you get customizable costumes. Each of the Oni Chambara games have quests that you can do that are usually like kill so many of this thing or use this attack so many times and once you do you'll get new costumes to put on or view. Surprisingly, almost all of the options involve putting more clothes on Aya. Seems like a bad marketing strategy. Mechanically, it's almost identical to the PlayStation 2 games with the exception of a janky motorcycle sequence that's got screen tearing up the ass. Like, literally on it. Help, I'm stuck. Oh, no. Oh, I guess also Anna has guns, and they are insanely more powerful than just using a sword. You can just spam the machine gun and not pay any attention. It's glitchy, it's kind of awful, and it reeks of kasoge, but for some reason, I can't take my eyes off the screen. Story-wise, it's not much to speak about. Reiko from the previous game comes back to hunt the girls, and you find out she's got a ton of clones. She and the totally inconspicuous men in black suits just want to check out the baneful blood and the heroines. That's it. Zombies are also here. Doesn't make sense. Sense, but it's okay. Look, the girl's in a bikini and she does the jiggle. It's what you paid for. Just don't ask the game for any tips, because uh, I might not have anything for you. So next up, we got One Chambara Bikini Zombie Slayers for the Wii, also known in Japan as One Chambara Revolution. Nintendo Revolution. Uh... I'm sure you're wondering how exactly these games fared in the States, considering they're actually being reviewed here now. Let's take a look at the scores. Ah, yes exactly what I expected. But you'll notice that the Wii game here is reviewed a good bit higher. Well, keep in mind that both of the games launched at a budget price here in the States. The 360 went at 40 and the Wii won at 30. If you're looking at the Wii, which was filled to the brim with shovelware garbage, this actually stands out. It was a rare adult-themed game on the family-friendly system, one that told you everything you needed to know on the back of the box. Hotties against zombies. Bombas sexy contra zombies. Tias buenas contra zombies. But this this is a Wii game, so get ready for Waggle. This is oddly appropriate. It's the same game though, like almost the exact same. Same environments, same characters, same weird point-based leveling system, same first level in a graveyard. But this time your combos and bodacious babes are accompanied by a Wiimote speaker. One Chambara was never a very difficult game, but replacing any timing in the combos with waggling makes it excessively easy, but also maybe, like, a little more fun? Whenever you're playing Asaki and she's punching, you basically have to swing both the Wiimote and Nunchuck like you're paddling to do big combos. It's definitely the most fast-paced game in the series at this point by a lot. Dare I say, it has moments of genuine fun? Debatable? One of Reiko's many robot clones makes an appearance as a playable character again, and this time she can shoot a gun by pointing at the screen with a controller, which also means you can make her do this. I would say of all the games in the series up until this point, Bikini Zombie Slayers is the easiest to just turn your brain off and enjoy. The combat starts to shine here in some of the boss fights, and I don't even mind some of the motion mechanics. There's an actual delay-based Wii Boat swing that you have to do, where you swing three times, wait half a second, and then thrust, and in order to kill specific enemies, and I'm like, whoa, an interesting use of the Wiimote, what? But overall, it's just the same game again, but with motion control. I love how we're five games into this now, and we've basically played the same thing every single time. Now, obviously, Origin is gonna be the way to experience that game, but there are a lot of other games still to talk about, and there was a massive leap in quality that would happen after that. We just didn't see it. So let's talk about it. 
After this failed 1-2 combo, Onichambara receded back into Japan. There was a PSP game called Onichambara Special that kind of did the same thing every PSP game did, the Monster Hunter light multiplayer lobby based mission gameplay. It's fine, it's functional, it's not much to say here, cause well it's not much of a game and also I can't really play it. And besides like a mobile game that I can't even find footage of, there's also two Onichambara movies. Yes, I said movies. They're pretty much exactly what you'd expect from a low budget cheesy zombie grindhouse flick. Overly generous slow motion shots, absurd choreography that looks like a tokusatsu TV show, and fan service for everyone. Don't worry, in case you were wondering, it does have Breaking Benjamin AMVs on YouTube. Everything is right with the world. But the game that really changed the direction of the series and turned it into what we got today was something we didn't get over here. Onichan Bara Z Kagura, an Xbox 360 exclusive. Weird, I know. This is where the concepts and lewdness really began to take off into the stratosphere, but also where they decided to make the games genuinely fun to play. We focus now on two new sisters, Kagura and Saya. These two are half vampiric, half baneful warriors, and generally a bit more lively. Kagura, in particular, is the complete opposite of Aya, so much so that she actually hates her, and it's her mission to eliminate her. She even dresses with a bikini and cowboy hat on specifically to mock Aya, and that is a 10 out of 10 Sigma move right there. Saya is calm and collected, Kagura is a brash, hot-headed, kinda herbo type, Aya is the cool beauty type, and Saki is angi. But all of them are stupid good with a sword for some reason, or chainsaw in Saya's case. Z Kagura did not come out over here, and neither did its enhancement port, Z Kagura with no no no, and I have no 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 idea what that's about. It's another guest character from one of Tamsa's other series. They tend to put them in for weird fan service reasons, or whatever Riho is doing doing in Onichambara 2. But what did come out over here was the direct sequel to Onichambara Z Kagura, Onichambara Z 2 Chaos. I picked this up on a whim back in 2015 or 16, and I'm glad I did because I got myself soaked in the Kasoge infested waters. I don't know if that's good or not. After a six month hiatus with three games totally missing from the States, XSeed teamed up with Tamsoft to publish this thing, and I am so glad that they did. Guess what? You don't start in a graveyard, hallelujah. Starting with Z Kagura, Onichambara decided to really pick up style, stop being a PlayStation 2 game, and lean way more heavily into the action genre of games with the likes of Devil May Cry or Bayonetta. You can now dash and that dash goes. The combos are way more involved, chaotic. The berserk mode no longer slowly kills you and has a more intense secondary version where you look more bestial, way cooler looking in every regard, and it's just faster. Sure, there's a smidge of jank here and there, but compared to the previous games, it's really night and day. So in this one, new sisters Kagura and Aya meet up with old sisters Aya and Saki and have to team up in order to defeat Evange. Also, everyone is very, very naked. Some of the scenes are straight up ridiculous, and it's only when I booted up the game, again, that I remembered why this was called the Banana Split Limited Edition. Go directly to jail. Do not collect $200. Despite being the 10th actual release in the series, it's only the third to make it stateside, but I'm totally glad I picked this up. I covered this a long time ago, and it's as I referred to back then, a guilty pleasure game, and still is. Check out that video if you want to know more, but if the series is to continue, I would love to see more of Kagura, as she's just a more enjoyable character than Aya. Now that we got four characters though, that means you get four player character switching in combat, and you're able to make them all do supers at the same time, making your screen turn into well, Z2 Chaos. The reviews on this one seem really mixed, and it depends on your tolerance for a skin, I suppose. But it's significantly more complex and intricate than anything coming before it, even if it's a little glitchy sometimes. <laughs> This series is really weird because it never pulls any attention to the fact that they're in bikinis or half naked. They just are. It has no bearing on anything happening. They're, it's just bodies. It's kind of like kill a kill at this point, but that's fine. That's E2 Chaos, and since we already covered Origin, I guess that's it. Now, we do got Schoolgirl Zombie Hunter, a prime Kisoge that released a few years ago, taking place in the Onichambara universe. It's 
you know, you know what this is. Three seconds of gameplay, you're fine. It seems like D3's realized that Onichan, Bara, and Earth Defense Force are two of their prime franchises, because Aya, Kagura, and other various Onichan, Bara related things tend to make cameos in other games more than you'd think. Be it costumes crossing over, Onichan girls on t-shirts, or the most recent and absurd voxel breasts in EDF World Brothers. If you've ever wanted to play as, quote, Aya, the calm big sister swordswoman from Onichan, Bara, looking like a cursed Minecraft SFM, here you go. It's clear that D3 wants to continue to do stuff with this series, and if you base it off of Z2 and Origin, I'm really interested to see where it goes. Even if it's like a 6 out of 10 and complete filth, that's just what it needs to be. So yeah, that's Oni Chambara for some reason. A series with a simple concept, but one that has somehow lasted 17 years, which also means the 20th year anniversary is around the corner, which means hopefully we'll get something decent. Anyways, that's all for now. I'm Austin, and catch me next time when I reveal my embarrassing eye level to the entire world. Also, shout out to Matt McMuscles, check out the video we did on his channel right after this. Do it. Okay, bye. Thanks so much for watching. Special Patreon shout out to Blackfoot Ferret, GM Pinks, Nick Irving, Zach Porter, P Funk, Ryan Talbert, Kevin Zanowski, Jordy McCaffrey, Karen Arter, Brandon Howell, Chris Shelton, David Molnar, Irrational, Donnan, J Roos, Jacoby Fitzpatrick, Christopher Olivia, DX Buster, and Legend Gary. Thank you all so much for your continued support. I finally did Yoni Chambara, and next week you'll see something a little more ridiculous. Actually, I don't know about that. You tell me. Catch my streams on uh, Twitch. I'm gonna play Final Fantasy 14 now. Okay, bye.